there are various definitions of microservices but the word microservices or micro web services was coined by dr peter rogers in 2005 in a presentation after that that word has picked up on and from there many articles and many courses and videos have been designed and developed for people to understand microservices but if i have to define microservices in one line i would just say a component or code that does one single thing very well while communicating with other pieces of code or services using a protocol of communication in order to understand the fundamental of microservices it is necessary that we understand the five key concepts which define how microservices are built and modeled these five concepts are high cohesion and low coupling independent deployability business domain modeling observability and team organization let's get into the detail of every concept one by one before we start going deep into every concept let's try to understand high level design and architecture of monoliths and microservices we are going to use these diagrams throughout the video to help you understand better if you look at these four diagrams these are actually different variations or different versions of a monolith a monolith is actually a code base which can have separate modules inside it but there will be a single database and there will be just one client layer this is a typical three tier architecture in some cases there will be no modularization of code and it will be just one single code base in some cases there can be the modularization of code along with different databases in other cases this is the fourth type of monolith where you have one single app but inside the app there are different modules but again it is deployed as a single module with a single database these are various types of monolith that you can see in practice coming to microservices architecture you can see that every single service is a different component with its dedicated database there is an api gateway to guard the client apps and route them we can discuss api gateway in details in some other video but this is the overall architecture of microservices now let's get started with the key concepts the first one is high cohesion and low coupling before we get into the high and low part of this let's try to understand what is cohesion and what is coupling if i talk about just one service orders the term cohesion means every functionality related to order or every feature or data or business logic related to order should be sitting very close to the order service or inside the order service if i have two services orders and product then all the information related to products or the features or business logic related to products all those features and code base should sit in product services that means that the services are cohesive in nature all the functionality which is related to that service sits inside that service and that's why we want our services to be highly cohesive now next let's talk about coupling in the microservices architecture services do talk to each other when they do talk to each other they should not be coupled with each other now what do we mean by coupling coupling means if the services are too dependent on each other or they know too much about each other or they, or they share a common data source or a database that would mean that the services are coupled with each other there are different types of coupling in which we can go into the details in further videos but for this video i will just try to explain one type of coupling so we have two services here orders and product the data inside orders is organized something like this with id user and date the data inside product is organized as id the name of product price of the product and currency this is a very simple example now order service might have to ask the product service by giving an id that this is a product id and i need the details of this particular product the order service can communicate through http rpc or any other communication protocol by sharing an id now the name of the fields if you see here are named as o underscore id product underscore id and user underscore id this is an example where we are trying to reduce the coupling if we would have used same ids what we have inside the order service or what we have inside the product then in future if these ids have to change we would have to change our contract as well so what has been done here in order to reduce coupling is the contract is designed in a way so that the information from these two services remains decoupled even if implementation changes in order service or the name of a field changes this contract still does not change because it is decoupled from both the services another example to keep your services low coupled is that your product service should not have any idea about order service it should serve the data that order service is asking for but it should not know what order service is going to do with it next concept that we have is business domain modeling 
in typical three tier architecture we have a client we have an application back end application and we have database but when we talk about microservices architecture the services are divided as per the business domain or business features so let's say that the domains that we have are we have orders we have payments for those orders we have different products we have to generate invoices for the orders in which people purchase those products we need to send notifications to the customers and we also have a cart functionality you must have guessed by now this is a very common e-commerce platform design very dumbed down e-commerce platform design so now you see that different businesses like orders or payments have different services we have designed our services we have modeled our services across different domains order service will only deal with anything related to order like placing an order or sending the order to payment service or maintaining the state of the order like the order is accepted or rejected or delivered and so on product service will just care about products of storing the products and serving that information to all the services which are asking for it the invoices service is only responsible to generate the invoices for the products that those have been purchased via placed orders payments as you know will take care of just payments so this is a typical microservice architecture where the services are modeled around the business domains if you want to read more about it i have linked a book called domain driven design it is a very good book and you should definitely check it out if you want to understand more about domain driven design the next key concept around microservices is independent deployability that means that you should be able to deploy your services independently of each other now in this diagram over here if you try to see we have a monolith which has modularized code but still it's one application we have a database and we have some client apps now if i make a change in orders module i still have to build the whole code and deploy it any small change in the code leads me to go through the whole cycle of build deploy test and release in some cases where ui also sits inside the monolith code there if you have made a back end change then also you have to go through this cycle and if you have made a front end change then also you have to go through this cycle that means that your code is coupled and it cannot be independently deployed if i have made a change in back end i have to build the whole app and deploy it however in case of microservices every service just like its dedicated database has a dedicated pipeline if any change has to be made in payments that change could be made and it can be deployed the other services don't even have to know about it if order service needs a change we can just make that change and deploy the order service so this is a key concept of microservices that you should be able to independently deploy your microservices if you're working in a team and they claim to have microservices architecture but if the deployment of one service is blocked by the deployment of another service that is a good flag to figure out that this is not a complete microservice architecture because we cannot deploy the service independently along with independent deployability we also get a feature with microservices which is independent scaling because if you look at it let's say that i have huge demand on order service i can just go and increment the instances of order service and i don't have to touch any other services while this is not possible to do in case of a monolithic architecture the next concept is around observability since you have different services it is very easy for you to observe what is going on with your services you can very easily see if any of your deployed services is functioning properly it's healthy or it is in a degraded state if you have implemented observability properly in your microservices you can always be able to find out a pattern as well that one service might be causing a degradation in other service if you have not implemented balances and checks properly so observability is also one of the good things that comes with microservices next concept is around resilience so in case of microservices if one of the service is degraded or one of the databases is down the other system is not affected of course you have to make sure that you have fault tolerance built into the system you have resilience built into the system so that the failures do not cascade or travel across the system but if you have done that correctly you can actually just focus on fixing the broken part of your services and the rest of the services will continue working as it is this ensures that even though there might be a part of the system that might be failing but your whole system will not come down the next important concept around microservices is the team organization this is one of the huge benefits of microservices as well if you have a very large team and you have modeled your services properly you can actually have dedicated team members working on different services as is evident by this diagram that 
very small teams are just focused on building their own microservices one of the benefits of having this team organization is also that the teams are pluggable one team can be working on one service for let's say a year or two and then you can also swap members of the team or you can just swap the teams so that they can focus on other services this helps in better team organization and for people to focus on just their pieces of code just their services to maintain which increases the service ownership in the organization it also speeds up the delivery of the features since we already went to the territory of getting the advantages of microservices some of the advantages that i do want to talk about and call out are autonomy of tech stack the ease of deployment and development along with the reusability of the code and the performance of the team as you can see in this diagram if you have microservices architecture implemented in your teams your teams are independent to choose which language they want to choose for their service maybe they want to build a notification service and ruby seems to be a better choice or they want to implement a small service like card and golang is a better choice on the other hand a service like payments requires a lot of performance and java is a better choice so depending on the skill set of your team and the need for the service the tech stack can be decided and all the services don't have to be written in the same tech stack this is a huge advantage that you have the autonomy of tech stack when you're working on a microservices architecture and not just with services you do have the independent to choose different databases as per different use cases to enhance the performance of the system as well as maintaining the costs since we already talked about resilience robustness of the system is also one of the advantages which comes with microservices let's say you had this microservices architecture and your invoices system is down the database and the application both are down yes the invoices will not be generated maybe the messages keep piling up for generating invoices but it will not stop the customers to place orders or make the payments or browse through the products and in the meantime while the rest of the system is working fine the invoices service can be repaired and can be brought back into the system but it did not affect any other parts of the system so robustness is one of the key features of microservices that one can have of course after implementing proper fault tolerance schemes into the systems as we already talked about independent deployability you can see here that every service has its own build pipeline the important point to note here is that not only you can deploy your services independently you can also migrate to better pipelines one by one let's say that you were using approach 1 for this particular pipeline now you wanted to move to another approach or you wanted to move to kubernetes or any other kind of ci cd pipeline or deployment approach you can slowly just move for this service to a new approach while the other services can keep running on the legacy pipelines and then slowly you can migrate the other services as well so not only independent deployability lets you deploy irrespective of other services it can also help you to move to better infrastructure since since everything is decoupled another advantage of having microservices is reusability let's say that you have built a service of invoices now tomorrow if the company has another use case like your company was working in a b2b model now it started working in a b2c model but still the component of invoices can be reused very easily and two different streams can be served using it this is also one of the huge benefits of microservices if you go and study the architectures of large companies you will find out that one microservice or a set of services are used across organizations let's say that there is a config management service the config management service will be utilized across the whole organization irrespective of the business or irrespective of the use cases because that service is actually now reusable i have already talked a little bit about team performance but let's see how microservices help us to gain team performance if there are small teams working on different services here is how microservices architecture can help the teams as well first the changes can run in parallel you can build multiple features in parallel because everybody is a part of a different team and they can run the work in parallel they will have less code conflicts they will have less issues while code review and the speed of the overall delivery would be faster another point is that you can have a diverse team of various skill sets and you can swap the team as per their skill sets so people will have more opportunities to grow and at the same time there is also the advantage of communication because now orders team only need to talk to people or stakeholders which are very close to that topic they don't need to talk to the people who are maybe working for the cart service so this helps smoothen the communication within the organization and this speeds up the delivery as well
Of course, microservices architecture is not the answer to every problem and there are very visible downsides of this architecture. You should know when to choose this architecture and more than the advantages of microservices architecture, you should be aware of the downsides of it. One of the biggest downsides of moving to a microservices architecture is of course the cost. When you had a monolith, you had a single database, few instances and no extra network cost. But when you move to a microservices architecture, you have to give space for more storage, you have to set up more machines, there is more data flow through the network and that also comes with a cost and hence overall this architecture is costly at least in the start when you're migrating to it. Since microservices architecture is a distributed system, you have to invest a lot into the logging, monitoring, tracing of the data and everything so that you can make the services more reliable and more resilient. Of course, that also comes with a cost. Either you have to build all these logging and tracing systems in-house or you have to spend money in order to get the tools which can do that for you. While having a variety of tech stack, sometimes maintaining a lot of tech stack can be detrimental as well because now you have services written in different languages and there can be concentration of the skill set. There is a team which was very fluent in Java and now let's say that something has to be rewritten in another language, they will face an issue there, at least for the starting. Similarly, you have different databases to maintain. If you don't have proper skill set to do this, it will come as a surprise that it will be costly as well as it will be difficult to maintain. One of the downsides to which there are different approaches to solve, which we can discuss in further videos, is data consistency. Let's see how. Since microservices are loosely coupled and we use different protocols for the communication to happen between microservices and the data to flow from one service to another, there are situations where the complete state is not same because we have distributed state. Let's take an example of order. There was this order with ID 142 and its state was accepted in orders and the same state got replicated to all the different services. Now, after some time when the payment went through and everything happened, the order state is changed to delivered in all the other services. But let's say that it could not get updated to delivered in invoice. And due to that discrepancy, the invoice got printed, but the status of the order in the invoice shows accepted and not delivered. Of course, this would not happen a lot, but it can happen sometimes and it can happen intermittently and it can be difficult to troubleshoot that problem. And hence we can conclude that there can be severe data consistency issues and distributed state management is a big problem to solve in microservices architecture. There are solutions for it and I'm not getting into the details, but again, this is not 100% guaranteed and sometimes this can become a problem. So that was a brief introduction to microservices. In part two of this video, we will try to dig deep in other topics of microservices like communication between microservices, how to model them and how does the observability and monitoring looks like in microservices. Till then, take care. See you in the next video.